Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs here, continuing to cook up this NBA action, man. Y'all know we do here on the Jam Session. We cook up every single game, every single day. I told you guys yesterday I was looking in the cold streak, and in the cold streak we did. We should have swept the board, but them Celtics fell apart late in that basketball game. Hey, the light-skinned man, Steph Curry, got busy. Shout out to him. But... We did cash our NBA player of the day, thanks to Mr. Ja Wick, man. Welcome back, Ja Morant, man, in hell of a fashion to do it in, man. I tried to tell you guys yesterday, Ja Morant more so than any other player, he has an aura around him. I don't know if you guys believe that or not, but he is the heart and soul of that Memphis team. And um, in all honesty, I'm glad he's back in the NBA. You could just see the energy that radiates off that guy's body. It is what it is, man. He's one of the best guards in the league. The Grizzlies were really not great before him. Were great with him. Weren't great without him. Hey, they might be poised to go on a run late second half. We'll see, man. We'll see. That game was fun last night, man. Shout out, Ja Wick, man. Welcome back. Hey, Money Making Wednesday. We got a huge card today. I'm super excited, man. Let's cook this shit up, man. Let's continue to kick the crap out of the books. Let's smash it per usual, man. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that tune in and watch this video. If you appreciate the content that I do, man, hey, smash that like button for your guy, man. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as I always say, man, if you're rocking with me, rock with me. I'm active on Twitter all day long, man. There's a link for that in the description below. And of course, I have premium plays over at the site, including my NBA player of the day, man. You can hop on something long term. Let me help you make some money over an extended period of time. Or if you're a bigger better out there, man, join my All Access Club. Uh, information's in the description below. Text the number, Jay's All Access. We'll set up a time to talk, figure out if the package is for you. Um, it's for the guys that have asked me for that next level premium service. And the guys that have been in the All Access from the start, hey, they're up huge, man. Just trying to keep the momentum rolling forward. Let's do that today, man. Let's keep the momentum rolling forward. Hey, money making Wednesday. Nice card. Let's smash it per usual. Appreciate y'all boys and girls, man. Without further ado, let's hop right into tonight's NBA action. All right, first game up, man. We got the Utah Jazz out on the road facing the Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland, home favorites, land six and a half to start our day. I don't want to overcomplicate this game, man. I'm just going to just gonna call a spade a spade. The Jazz on the road thus far this season, most of the time, straight ass. Cleveland, where do we mainly look to bet them at home? I understand why the line is where it's at. It's Cleveland or pass for me here in the first game of the day. Yes, the Jazz are playing better basketball right now. They've won three of their last four, including um, one on the road where they covered against Portland. We, we faded them that game. And they're coming off a huge win at home over the Brooklyn Nets. Blew them out 125-108. Still don't trust these boys out on the road. We haven't all season. They've played, what, 15 games on the road or something or so? 12 of them, they've been beaten by 15-plus. Can't trust the Jazz on the road. Can't do it. Won't do it. Cleveland, I typically only look in their direction at home. Coming off of two back-to-back -back home wins, third straight home game. I think Donovan Mitchell's the best player on the floor. I think they do enough here to win this game in the end, cover the point spread. First game up, I'm taking Cleveland, laying the six and a half. Next game up, man, we got the Charlotte Hornets out on the road facing the Indiana Pacers, a.k.a. the Tyrese Halliburton's, man. The Halliburton's are struggling right now, man. Let's call a spade a spade, man. This team has been a thorn in my side recently. We were cashing like no other early in the season on these boys, but recently it hasn't been all that great, man. This team has lost four straight, and they've been blown out in um, all four. Milwaukee blew them out 140-126. Uh, Washington blew them out 137-123. Minnesota Beat up on them 127 109, and then the Clippers took them behind the woodshed as well 151 127. They're back at the crib. Um, I know they were at the crib in that last one where the Clippers blew them out, but I'm on the Pacers again, man. Short, sweet, simple. I'm on the Pacers here. Bounce back game at the crib, revenge spot. They take a bad team behind the woodshed. That's my thoughts. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, I like taking good to, good to decent teams. I think the Pacers are a good team. Though. I think I like taking good teams at home in bounce back spots. And we got the revenge angle on top of this as the Hornets did beat Indiana in Indiana early this season, 125-124. The problem with Indiana is their defense, man. But I don't, I'm not really afraid of Charlotte's offense in this game. I think if we get Indiana's best, 
Um, they're going to run these boys right at the gym. That's what I think here. Charlotte, um, they've lost five straight. I expect them to make it six. Um, you know, they've been blown out in back-to-back -back games as well. I expect them to get blown out in their third straight game. Bounce back game at the crib for the Indiana Pacers, for the Halliburtons. I'm going to lay the points with my guys. And now when next game up, man, we got the Miami Heat. They're out on the road, man, facing their um, state mate, the Orlando Magic. Interesting game we got going on here, man. The Heat, they're battling. Um, kind of similar to what they were last year where they kind of just went through the motions, were a playing team, and went to the finals. I still think the Heat are one of the four best teams in the Eastern Conference. Thing is, I think the Magic are one of the four best teams in the in the Eastern Conference as well. Um, and I think the Magic are just straight up, flat out, better than Miami right now today. Um, I know that sounds kind of crazy to say, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I've loved what I've seen from this Magic team. I am love the steps that they've taken to get better. Um, they got a collection of young talent, and they're playing really well. As you see on your screen, hey, we've been cashing like no other on the Orlando Magic. And... I see no reason to doubt them here. I think they come in here, play great defense at the crib, lock up Miami, win this game by like eight, nine, maybe even double digits. That's how I see this game shaking out. Um, so I'm not really overcomplicating this one, man. I think the Magic are the better team, playing the better basketball. They're at home, and I think they get this one done. Don't necessarily like the spot for Miami either. Miami just played four straight games at the crib. Now they're out on the road. Um, Magic, it's a bounce back spot, man. We did see them get embarrassed in back to back games in Boston. Come back home, get right, win comfortably like they did the two home games before they went to Boston. It's a bounce back spot for the Orlando Magic, the better team, playing the better basketball. I expect them to win comfortably here at the crib. Let's keep it moving, man. Let's keep it moving. Next game up, really good one. I cannot wait to watch this one tonight. We've got a really good card of NBA action tonight. Uh, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves, man. Don't the Timberwolves have the best record in the NBA? I believe they do. Um, they're out on the road facing the Philadelphia 76ers. This is going to be a game, game, game. Here's the thing. We already seen the T-Wolves kick the crap out of um, Philadelphia once. This year that game was in Minnesota. Final score was 112-99. I do believe... Uh, I'm trying to go back and double check. I don't believe Joel played that game. Correct. Yes, Joel did not play that game. So you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt. What have I told you guys about Philly most of this season? I I just don't like fading them. Like Philly is a team that more often than not I leave alone because they're laying a huge number, and I usually lean in their direction. I just can't get there most of the time. Um, as you see on your screen, they've been a money-making team. Uh, they're 18 and 8 straight up, but they're also 18 and 8 against the number. Minnesota, they've won four of their last five. This is going to be their fifth road game in their last six games. This, here's the thing: I think Minnesota, more so than any other team in the NBA, matches up well with Philly. Reason being is because they got the two big guys down low in Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. But I can't fade Philly in Philly at home. I know, and coming off a loss, I can't do it. I just can't do it, and I won't do it. It's Philly. It's Philly for me here tonight, man. It is. I think Embiid. Look at his numbers, man. He's playing at an MVP level again. Um, I think he gets busy tonight. I do. I do. So, not one of my favorite games tonight. Probably not rushing to the window to bet this game. The Minnesota Timberwolves are hooping, bro. They are. But I can't take them to go in here and. and uh, and do this against Philly. I can't do it. I see Embiid having a nasty game. Maxi probably having a nice game. I'm on the Sixers in this one. We'll see. We'll see. Next game up, man. We got the Battle of New York. Should be a really good game as well. We got the Knicks. They're laying one and a half on the road on the Brooklyn Nets. Oof. The Nets, man. Um, they're free falling right now. The Nets, they've lost four of their last five. Thing is, they played five straight games on the road. Um you know, but they lost three straight pretty comfortably. Uh, well, take that back. They got blown out by Utah, lost by four to Golden State, and then the Denver Nuggets took them behind the woodshed, 124-101. So another game where I just see a bounce-back spot at the crib for a team that has been a money-making machine for us thus far this season. You see it on your screen, 17-8-1 against the number. 
think they come back home and bounce back. I haven't liked what I've seen from the Knicks really either. I know they've won three of their last five, but you know, to you know, they lost on the road to the Jazz, got blown out by the Clippers out on the road. They did beat the Lakers and the Suns, solid wins there. I just I just don't trust them out on the road. Um, the Knicks they have won the last two meetings, but the Nets have won seven of the last nine. So there's that. I'm on the Nets here. Short, sweet, simple. The Nets have been a money-making machine for me thus far this season. I put in a ton of money in my pockets. I think they come back to the crib and bounce back. I don't trust the Knicks out on the road um, to bounce back spot for Brooklyn in Brooklyn. I'm going to take them here home, dog. All right, next game up, man. We got the defending champs, the Denver Chicken Nuggets, out on the road facing the Toronto Raptors. Nuggets laying four and a half points on the road in this one. It's a tough game. Um, the reason it's a tough game for me is because the Nuggets are rolling. They've won four of their last five. We've seen them win and cover in their last two road games. Thing is, what do we know about the Nuggets? Where do they mainly take most of their L's on the road? Last season, they were a 50-50 road team and went stupid, dummy, crazy at the crib in Denver. Toronto, what do we know about these boys? They typically are a straight fade on the road, straight ass, and at home in Toronto where they got a whole country behind them. It's typically where they play their best basketball. So, it's a tough game. You know what I mean? I do lean Denver. I think Denver is head and shoulders a better team. I mainly fade Toronto most of the t chances I get. Um, they have won two of their last three at the crib. The thing is, the, the one they lost was terrible loss. They lost to Atlanta 125-104. They did uh, beat them the first time they played them, 135-128. It was a back-to-back -back situation. And then their last game they played, they uh, won and covered over the Charlotte Hornets. They should win and cover at home over the Charlotte Hornets. Tough game here, man. Um, it's Nuggets for me, though. Short, sweet, simple. I'm not looking to bet the Raptors. Um, nuggets are rolling. I'm starting to see the Nuggets kind of get into that championship form um, that they were in last year. They're, they're getting healthier as the season progresses. We're starting to see Murray really incorporate himself. Michael Porter Jr. never swing the rock. Porter Jr. Um, playing well right now. Of course, Jokic playing at an MVP level. Um, it's Nuggets for me here. Looking to fade the Raptors. A bad team, in my opinion. Good team going up against a bad team. Um, leaning in the direction of the Denver Chicken Nuggets. The defending champs. Keep it rolling. Next game up, man. We got the Lake Show. The Los Angeles Lakers. They're out on the road facing the Chicago Bulls. I see I messed up the graphic here, but it's all good. Lakers laying four and a half, not Bulls plus 24 and a half. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I'm on uh, – this injury report is really ugly for both teams. So nine times out of ten, I'm not betting this game. Let me start there. I'm probably not betting this game. If I were to, it would be the Lake Show for me here. I just think they bounce back. You know, they're not playing that well. They've lost – you know, three of their last five. The injury report is ugly per usual. Anthony, day-to-day, -day, Davis, game-time decision. LeBron, game-time decision. Vanderbilt, game-time decision. Um, I'm seeing even Gabe Vincent might be back. The Bulls injury report is ugly as well. Caruso, game-time decision. Craig is out. Patrick Williams, game-time decision. Ah, I lean Lake Show. Should be a bounce-back team for the better team, in my opinion. Bulls are playing decent right now. They've won two of their last three. Beat Miami and Philly. But, nah, I, I, I'm i not looking to bet the Bulls here. I I think LeBron, AD, do play LeBron in the place that the Michael Jordan built, um, the second greatest player of all time. I think he sh goes in there, shows out, is my thought process there. Anytime LeBron plays in Chicago, I feel like he tries to go extra hard. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Again, not one of my favorite games. I'm probably not even going to bet this thing. If I am, I got to see the final injury report. But right now, right here, I'm leaning Los Angeles. Lake Show, Lakers. Let's keep it rolling, man. Next game up, we got the worst ATS team in the NBA, the Atlanta Hawks, out on the road facing the best home ATS team in the NBA, the Houston Rockets. Short, sweet, simple. We're on the Houston Rockets in this one. I'm not even trying to overcomplicate this. And I will tell you, everybody, their uncle, mama, and auntie is going to be on the Houston Rockets. It's okay, though. As I tell you guys a lot, the public does win, too. You know, the Sharps get their ass kicked all the time. Don't let them people tell you otherwise. Um, the public get their ass kicked, too. But they do win. And I think this is one of the games where they just win. The books have been getting their ass kicked on the Hawks all season long. 
So it doesn't surprise me that they got him at a, at a it doesn't surprise me that they got them here at a competitively priced line. It doesn't surprise me. They've done that all season and gotten their ass kicked all season. They're six and twenty against the number. The Houston Rockets, they're 15, 7, and 2 against the number. The Houston Rockets at the crib at home in Houston are 10, 1, and 1 against the number. I've covered in 90% of their games. I think they're the better team playing the better basketball. Not overcomplicating this one. It's Houston, 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 Houston. Um, here in that one. Next game up, we got my favorite team, the Dallas Mavericks, man, at the crib, getting three and a half points against the Los Angeles Clippers. Clippers hooping. I've been fading these boys and losing money. Thing is, fading them again. Did y'all think I was really going to fade my boys today and take the Clippers? No. It's just going to set up beautifully to my guys are going to be the one to end this win streak they're on, man. If y'all don't know, now you know. Luka Doncic, every time he plays the Los Angeles Clippers, typically gives them 50. Last game he played them, the Clippers did get a dub. I was kind of surprised to see them beat my Mavs last time they played. Uh, they beat the hell out of us in L.A. It was 107-88. Luka had 30 that game, but we still lost. The first game this season, the Mavs blew the doors off the Clippers, 144-126. Luka had 44. Um, that's typically how the Clippers-Mavs games look. I might go to this game tonight. Nah, I might go tonight. I really might. I might pop out, go go to the AAC, and watch Luka get absolutely busy on the Clippers tonight. The Clippers are rolling. Hats off to them boys. Them boys rolling. But that shit ending the night, I think so, for real. Um, I'm on my Mavs. I would take them straight up money line. I don't even think you need the points in your back pocket. That's how I think here. Uh, Clippers, they're coming off a pretty significant homestand. Uh, they did blow the doors off of Indiana in that last one, but Indiana really wasn't playing that well. They haven't been playing that well. Um, the Mavs are kind of banged up. I hate that Derek Lively's out and Kyrie's still out. But, again, this series between these two teams, it's about Luka Doncic. He hates the Clippers. He hates the Clippers. There's two teams the Mavs hate with a passion. It's the Clippers and the Suns, and those are typically the games where Luka Doncic goes insane. I would probably bet his triple-double tonight. Um, I would probably bet him 40-plus tonight, Luka-type night. We're entering that part of the season where guys are starting to have historic nights. We've seen Giannis have a couple. We've seen John Morant come back, have a nice one last night. Historic night for one of the league's best players, the second-best player in the league, in my opinion. My favorite player, Luka Doncic, man. He's on my wall for a reason. Hey, I think we beat the Clippers tonight. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you don't think so, take the Clippers. Take them. Last game up, man. We got the Boston Celtics, man. They let us down last night with their trash ass. Uh, they were winning all game and then let the light-skinned man Steph Curry get busy fourth quarter. Not surprised. Not surprised. That's Steph Curry, man. I can't figure out the Warriors really, though, man. Like, I just – for a while it was the Kings I couldn't figure out. And right now it's kind of the Warriors. I got to figure them out. I've kind of figured out the Kings here recently, and I'm on the Kings here in this spot. I'm not – I'm done with the Celtics on the road. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Um, as I told you guys yesterday, um, and I tried to go against it, but they are what their record says they are. And the Celtics – I caught that. The Celtics are <laughs> the worst road ATS team in the NBA. That's what they are. 2-8-2 two, and two against the number. They've only covered in 20% of their road games. Um, Yeah, can't do it. Won't do it. It's Kings here for me. Kings playing well. I like what I'm seeing from um, them collectively. They've won four of their last five. They're comfortable at the crib as well. It's going to be their fifth home game in their last six games. Um, I'm starting to see this line actually start to go up. So, uh, Porzingis, he's out tonight. And I wouldn't be surprised if somebody else sat for Boston on the back end of a back-to-back -back with travel. It's not far from Golden State to Sacramento, but still. Um Bad spot for the Celtics. They've been terrible on the road. I'm not trying to buck the trend here. Give me the Sacramento Kings. I'm going to lay the two and a half here in our last and final game of the night. And that's going to conclude this episode of my NBA Jam Session. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you boys and girls that tune in and watch this video daily. If you appreciate the content, man, smash that like button for your guy. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, say, man, if you're rocking with me, rock with me. I'm active on Twitter all day long, man. There's a link for that in the description below. And of course, I have premium plays over at the site, um, including my NBA play of the day. Bounced back on it yesterday with the Memphis Grizzlies. Hey, looking to keep the momentum rolling forward. I absolutely love tonight's play. Scoop it up or hop on something long-term or join my all-access club or just continue to watch the NBA Jam Session video right here, man. 
I appreciate you guys all the same. Let's make some money tonight. Let's continue to kick the crap out of the books, man. It's been your guy, Jay Briggs. See y'all soon. I'm out of here.